I'm Ann Charles. I'm Linda Quinlan. I'm Keith Gosland. Today is Tuesday, the 26th of February. This is all things LGBTQ. We've already been talking, so we're going to let you in on the conversation. <laughs> Shall we start with international headlines? <coughs> oh. Yes. Yeah, because I know what you got. <laughs> I have a penguin extravaganza. You have two penguins. Two okay. stories, two clips. Finding love among the gay penguins at the London Zoo is my first story. A video <laughs> captures the lavish wedding ceremony <laughs> for inseparable gay penguins. That's my it. first segment. I my other headlines are, uh, this is sort of a sad segment. Transgender woman who sought asylum in the U.S. was deported and killed in El Salvador. A Mexican LGBT activist, Oscar Cazarola, is found dead. Opposition for LGBTQ rights group in Tunisia. Venezuelan police raid HIV AIDS organizations offices. And then I have some more um, upbeat headlines. Gay lovers go viral in Greece as Valentine's Day ads spark debate. <laughs> Japan launches the first LGBTIA safe house. New public school for trans people opens its doors in Pakistan. Serbian prime minister's gay partner gives birth to a baby boy. And we've seen these, uh, Anna Brnabic, we've seen her before. She's the prime minister of Serbia. And her partner who gave <coughs> birth is Melissa Jurgic. <laughs> she said head. that very carefully. <laughs> I, mean, I doubt that it's good. It's accurate. But those are my headlines. Good. Thank I'm you. looking forward to seeing the penguins. Yes. Well, we have Jesse Smollett, and he was dropped from an LGBTQ charity project following his arrest after investigators accused him of hiring two men to attack him. And um, a lot of people are uh, wondering if this case is going to hurt hate crime survivors. Mm -hmm. So, Richard Grant dedicates Indie Spirit Award to AIDS victims. The actor portrayed an HIV positive man, uh, Jack Hawk, in the movie Can You Ever Forgive Me, mm. which I really liked. Mm -hmm. Colorado takes action against conversion therapy. South Dakota law uh, uh, tries to ban discussion on trans identity and issues in school is dead for this session. Evangelicals are furious over Trump's plan to decriminalize homosexuality abroad. Director Rob Cohen is accused of sexually assaulting his trans daughter. North Carolina election win by anti-gay minister will have a do-over. Uh, because the vo because of voter fraud, there will be a new election in the Charlotte area. Absentee votes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was so Horrible. reprehensible and glaring. And then he was crying in court. And mm. Anyway, the lesbian story Marguerite was nominated for best short film. It didn't win. However, we saw that. We saw that it didn't win. Yeah. This film brings love to light and was the only film with any LGBTQ elements in this category. Uh, Mary Ann Farley, the director of the short movie, was the only female nominated. So keep an eye out for Netflix or one of the other movie channels to see if you can pick up the movie, the short movie Marguerite. Popes call critics of Catholic Church friends of the devil. That's nice. I know. Everybody yeah. needs friends. <laughs> <laughs> Athlete Alley Cats ties, uh, cuts ties with Martina Navratilova. A progressive black lesbian could be Chicago's next mayor. And I have a picture of, of her. There's about 15 people running for mayor of Chicago. But I, but uh, she does stand a chance. So, if you're in Chicago watching us, please vote for her. Mike Pence's daughter gets engaged at the LGBTQ resort of Provincetown. 
Dawn Sheetle supports trans kids with a powerful message on Saturday Night Live. Sharon Bonham dies at 48. Brandi Carlisle told Ellen DeGeneres on her show that she came out because of her. And Molly Gray, the Mormon Disney star, quietly comes out. Lady Gaga made by history with an Oscar win for the best song, Shallow, from A Star Is Born. <coughs> Top three awards go to films with gay themes. Bohemian Rhapsody, the favorite. You mean the Oscar, Oscar Awards, The right? Oscar Awards, Oh, yeah. we're uh, talking about the Oscars now. Yeah. So they were Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, and The Green Book. So there you go. The Green Book wasn't that out, but okay. But he did he was have out. that they, scene with a... Uh, Shirley, I guess, was gay. And yeah. Well, there, was a, there was that one gay scene. But go ahead. I want to say Oscar's not so gay. Nobody thinks they're partners. Nobody, you know, the word gay no. was used once. But I digress. I I'm going to thank I thought it was kind Governor of Phil Scott for showing up at LGBTQIA Visibility Day at yes. the State House, where there were, at my last count, 18 of us mm -hmm. who wandered in and out throughout the day. The governor came out, engaged in conversation with us, and We should have had that picture up. There may be several pictures of it that Zach's showing as oh, we speak. Oh, okay. I'm the one if in the hat. If you can see me, Zach let us down on the job. <laughs> I'm wearing a black hat. No one could recognize me. In I picture. went home early. We are so full of digressions tonight. <laughs> Continue, Keith. Welcome to the cat rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> There's some upcoming events that I want to go over really quickly. If you are seeing this show on Saturday night, then you're not at the Montpelier Contra Dance. Larks and Ravens at the Capitol Grange, which started at 7.30 for the beginners, 8 to 11 for the advanced. But fear not, because they will also be there the third and fifth Saturdays in March, which are the 16th and 30th. And this event actually will have already happened by the time this program airs, but it's the Pride Center of Vermont is finally going to do their needs assessment of LGBTQ elders. And it will be on Wednesday starting at 5 o'clock. Anybody over 60, we barely count. I That's don't. my last word. <laughs> but what people should be following is that Mike Denzel had told us that this would be an ongoing series and their office are going to talk about issues of fraud, healthcare, housing, and online dating. Oh. Yeah, there we are. Stonewall 50. If you're interested in organizing, there will be a meeting on Tuesday, March 5th, which is also town meeting day, 6 o'clock at the Senior Center, and another one on Monday, March 25th, also 6 o'clock at the Senior Center. Next segment, I'm going to talk a little bit about some pieces of legislation that are going through paid family leave, ethnic and social studies curriculum, minimum wage. Um, there's also a conversation that's been happening in the Senate Judiciary Committee about bias and hate motivated crime based upon the incident with Kaya Morris in Bennington. And they're looking at how they can strengthen that statute, but no bill has been drafted as of yet. Encouraging piece of news, the U.S. Department of Justice has decided that Vermont's fair and impartial policing policies fully complies well, with federal law requirements. So we get the money now? Two million dollars. Yes, I heard that. That okay. they have been withholding for 15 months and it will all be going for drug enforcement Good. initiatives. So if I say that's what I've got for right now, then Maybe Anne will Give us the show penguins. us the wedding to which we were not invited. Well, may I add to your headlines? Oh, what? On Monday, March 4th, the Kellogg Hubbard Library will be showing XXY, a foreign language drama made in 2000. And who sent her that notice? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <And I'm laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I have it here at hand. Uh, the plot involves a 15-year-old struggles as an intersex individual, the right. way the family copes, and what <clears throat> ultimately is decided in a society that has specific expectations. The film starts at 6.30 p.m. and will be followed by a discussion for those who wish to stay. 
all are welcome. This is the latest in the ongoing LGBT book film discussion series co-organized by the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. Thank you for sending me that notice, Keith. <laughs> Thank right. you for remembering it. It's teamwork. Ah. But now let's go to the penguins, oh, shall we? Please. Yes. Um, I feel like I should go get my tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> well, dressing up is involved in you my have second a little bow clip. Tie. In the second clip. But let's uh, first look at the London Zoo, if we could. Same-sex relations are common in the animal kingdom. I hope this show demonstrates that. <laughs> Particularly among birds such as penguins. The chief curator of the London Zoo probably has more experience with penguins than most. I think there is something we can learn from penguins and other species in the way that they're tolerant of same-sex relations, Brian Zimmerman told Reuters ahead of Valentine's Day on last Thursday. Humans could take lessons from other animals as it is about survival <laughs> at the end of the day and caring. We have a lot to learn from penguins. Humboldt penguin couples, two male and one female, out of a total of 95 penguins, a higher percentage than the 5% of human population estimated to L be LGBT+. London Zoo is currently a home to this group. Examples of same-sex pairs at other zoos around the world are common. Earlier this year, and I reported on this extensively, two male penguins hatched an egg at a zoo in Australia. Yeah, you yeah. may recall this story. Um, penguins are one example of same-sex relationships, but uh, they're common in parrots and doves as well. Penguins first arrived at the London Zoo in 1865. 37 years after it first opened as a center for scientific study. They have been housed since 2011 in Penguin Beach, which encompasses 1,200 square miles. It's a pool and various forms of natural habitat. For Zimmerman, same-sex animal pairs capture the public's imagination because they hold a mirror up to society. There are a lot of species where we haven't observed same-sex relations, but we are learning more all the time. The more we study them, particularly in a zoo environment where we can spend more time getting to know the individuals, the more we learn that same-sex pairings are more common than we expected. And now I would like to show you a London Zoo clip featuring Brian Zimmerman telling us about same-sex couples in the animal kingdom. In the animal kingdom, same-sex relationships are actually quite common. Different taxas or different types of animals may display that a bit more frequently than others. Um, birds in particular are known to exhibit same-sex relationship pairings on a regular basis. We have uh, three pairs of same-sex penguins. We name all of our penguins. Nice to tell visitors, so this is Reggie and Ronnie, and they are a same-sex pair, and it's wonderful, and they are in love. <laughs> I think it's not just gay penguins people love, they love penguins full stop. And because, partially because of the way they behave and the way they look, but also they're very sociable animals. And I think we actually can relate to that. Humans being social individuals and we live in complex societies, penguins also have very complex societies and they, they have all different types of individuals within their societies. Penguins do adopt eggs, um, so same-sex pairs do adopt eggs as well. So for example, we had a pair here that has abandoned a nest. We then put it um, under a same-sex pair and they actually raised a chick. There is definitely something that we can learn from penguins and other species in the fact that they're tolerant of same-sex relationships and it's about actually just looking after each other and surviving. And I think humans could certainly take a lesson from other animals. I think a lot of people see penguins as the ultimate animal for Valentine's Day and everything that Valentine's Day represents. So penguins do like to be in love and they do like to sort of connect and, and show off their love to everyone else. So cute.
Institute. Well, it's very informative. I, I want to know if, by virtue of the marriage in London, it now makes the chicken Australia illegitimate because <laughs> its parents weren't married. <laughs> well, this wasn't a marriage in London. It was a marriage in Cotswold, and I'd like to turn to that now. Where is Cotswold? In England. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't know penguins were birds. I thought they were I, I get, I, I'm not going there. I, I'm not either. Yeah. First, I'd like you to show you a still picture of Ferrari <coughs> and Pringle. You see them now. They uh, wanted to share their big day. They are the couple who gets married in the clip, but first I want to tell you about it. Two devoted, they're showbiz penguins. <laughs> They've gotten married in style with their lavish big gay wedding day captured in a special video. When Ferrari and Pringle tied the knot in their same-sex ceremony, there were makeup artists to ensure they looked their best, a, <laughs> a chauffeur-driven Bentley, and a beautiful Cotswolds venue, followed by a wedding breakfast of sprats, <laughs> which are forage fish, I learned. Did you know what sprats were? No. No. I was going with the smoked herring, but okay. <laughs> Penguin food, sprats. A male, the male Humboldt penguins are inseparable, nest together when they cannot reproduce. Their handlers say they sit on a rock each year trying to Aww. incubate an egg. The, firm, <laughs> the film was romantically shot by the wedding video company from Gateshead and is being released ahead of St. Valentine's Day. We're a little late, but... It captures Pringle in a black bow tie being pampered before the ceremony, then Ferrari hopping off the red leather seat of the Bentley and trotting down the aisle where his husband-to-be is waiting. The pair touch beach, I'm telling you this, and then you'll be able to watch it just in case you miss anything. The pair touch beaks when they are pronounced married by Andrew Rohan, who is the minister, and are shown being showered with confetti, having a disco, you can see them dancing, and happily exploring the grounds of Mariscourt Venue in, the Chipping, Nor in Chipping Norton. Ferrari is 21, Pringle is six. They've appeared on the Jonathan Ross Show, Alan Carr's Chatty Man, Our Zoo, and at the red carpet premiere of Mr. Popper's Penguins. You may not know these shows. When not appearing at show business events, the pair who have met Sir David Attenborough also attend care homes for therapeutic visits. James Pullen, um, who is the caretaker at the Haythrop Zoological Gardens in Oxfordshire, where they live, so these two penguins have worked together for years now, and it became apparent from the beginning that they could not spend a day without each other. They were so in love. The zookeeper and trainer said they have been ring bearers before, and they do proposals, but they have never been married before now. Rob Earnshaw from the Wedding Company video said, we've captured the special day for hundreds of happy couples, but I can honestly say, <laughs> hand on heart, that nothing quite prepares you for a celebrity penguin wedding. It all embraces the celebration of love for Valentine's Day. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. And now I'd like to show you the wedding clip of Ferrari and Pringle. Welcome everybody to today's proceedings. We know in our hearts that these two are perfect for each other. You may now kiss the groom. These two penguins have worked together for years now and it became apparent from the beginning that they couldn't spend a day without each other. They were so in love. I am overwhelmed that they have been able to tie the knot today and I'm sure they're looking forward to a happy married life from now on. All right, now we'll move to Linda. <laughs> Where was our invitation? I know it, exactly. I'd go to a penguin wedding in a heartbeat. Okay. 
But after, how can you follow that? You can't. I know, really. <coughs> Something would, salacious. I know. I wish. Okay. Some nice pictures. Colorado takes action against conversion therapy. A bill banning conversion therapy passed the Colorado House after four previous attempts. If it's signed into law, HB 1129 would represent one of the nation's toughest conversion therapy bans. HB 1129 also gives power to the state licensing board to take action against any medical profession, uh, any medical provider that offers conversion therapy to minors. So that's a pretty good law. Yes. South Dakota lawmakers um, efforts to ban discussion of trans identity and issues in school is dead for the season. The committee voted seven to two to defer HB 1108 to the 41st day of the session, which blocks it from <coughs> consideration this year. I heard there were five bills, anti-trans bills offered in South Dakota yeah. and they were all voted they down. They were all right. voted down. Well, yeah, they were all voted down, but this is like, this was a tactic they used, like they set it for the 41st day, which was the last day of the session, so that it, it would, would fail. expire. It would fail, expire, yeah. It would have prevented teachers from engaging with trans students anytime, whether they were being bully, bullied or targeted because of their gender identity, so it was a good thing that failed. And uh, evangelicals are furious over Trump's plan to decriminalize um, homosexuality, even though he didn't really even know what he was doing. <laughs> there we go. I know. I'm sponsoring what summit? <laughs> Where? I know. <laughs> really? So that was kind and of. And it was Mike Pence's <laughs> idea? Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's being uh, pushed through by, um, what's his name, Grendel? Grinnell. Richard Grinnell. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the he's the an um, American ambassador to the United Nations. No, he wants to be ambassador to the United Nations. But he's ambassador Germany. Germany. He's a yeah. German uh, diplomat. So a diplomat well, to Germany. He's yeah. the U.S. ambassador to, to right. Germany. Germany. No, th but this was all a ploy. The, the background to it was that 45 regime could then use this as a means for citing Iran for human rights violation right. because of their persecution of LGBTQ. It had nothing to do with truly decriminalizing or... No. And we're not even going to talk about Saudi Arabia. It's a political no. toy. Mm -hmm. And and Grendel has denounced Iran in particular among 71 countries where homosexuality is outlaw for its persecution of gay people. So. Um, and he said he wasn't specifically pointing to Iran. It was just one of the yeah 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 oh, yeah, really? yeah yeah yeah. It was just one of the seventy-one countries. So I'll, I'll, I'll believe the legitimacy yeah. when Mike Pence is officiating at a same-gender wedding. Well, <laughs> maybe in Provincetown. Uh, Pope calls critics of the church friends of the devil. And a letter from cardinals blamed. Uh, the uh, LGBT community um, and the victims advocacy group ending clergy abuse stated that the church must kick out bishops and cardinals that cover up the abuse um, that their resignation wasn't good enough I say jail isn't good enough but so the Pope said that those people are friends? no the victims advocate group ending clergy abuse stated that the church must kick out bishops and cardinals so who was said who was friends of the devil oh the Pope said that anybody who criticized the church were friends of the devil that's pretty intense really isn't that yeah because I yeah. thought he was kind of being namby pamby about it well you know, he goes through these things. I mean, the whole you know, thing like is so corrupt. Well, he the says, Vatican you know, treasurer just got convicted. Yeah, I of know. Yeah, I know. And he goes Three back counts. and forth about this. You know, I don't. You know, I don't know. It's just but. incredible revelation. I mean, we all knew, but revelation after revelation. I know. Finally. And they're saying, you know, the the cardinals and everybody want to say, you know, that it's. Um, it's homosexuality it, that's the problem mm -hmm. um, et cetera et cetera but a progressive it's called pedophilia yeah mm -hmm. Just, yeah 
And that doesn't account for all the other things like, you know, children of priests or raping nuns or, you know, never mind, but, yeah. you know, all of that. Yeah. A progressive black lesbian could be Chicago's next mayor, Lori Lightfoot, and I have a picture of her. A community activist wants a livable Chicago that is more than just tourists and downtown denizens. As Chicago appears to elect a new mayor, Ms. Lightfoot is confident she can make the city better for everyone. She's a lawyer and an activist. So Good. Hope um, she wins. So I hope she wins. Um, and I, there is a picture of her. So I think we'll move to you now. Politics. <laughs> so in the interview that comes at the end of the show, there will be a conversation with Representative Kathleen James about H 185, which has to do with transgender and non identifying youth in athletics, access to facilities, etc. So I'm not going into it in depth now. What we should be following very closely, though, is H3, which hopefully by the time this program airs, will have passed the Senate, gone back to the House for them to concur, which we are told will happen. And it may actually be on its way to the governor for signing, which would be good. And again, H3 is the bill that would put together a task force to look at developing curriculum for Vermont schools that deal with ethnic and social groups we are decidedly included in the social groups. The other piece of legislation going through to be mindful is H-107, which is paid family leave. Um, it came out of the House Committee on General Housing and Military Affairs, has gone to Ways and Means. The language coming out of the G House General Committee, positive language in recognizing domestic partnerships, the types of families and relationships that the LGBTQ community creates, they're in there. However, what's happening in House Ways and Means is they've got all the fiscal people coming in and talking to them. Mm. And what the bill already includes is paid family leave at 100% of your wages for up to 12 weeks per year for, 10 or, for businesses with 10 or more full-time employees, which is a lesser standard than originally proposed. However, and what they were looking at is less than 1% tax. Do other states have 100%? Because I thought people usually got like 80% of their salaries or something, right? She's going right to the four states for which I have where the, <laughs> the average standard is 60%. 60%, 60 okay. 60%. However, what the economists were telling Ways and Means is if there is indeed a recession, which everyone thinks mm -hmm. yeah. is imminent, this will run out of money after two years. Yeah. So they're looking at how to make this sustainable. Um, the other thing that is happening for which we should be mindful, there are six constitutional amendments working their way through the Senate. You know, giving the governor a four-year term, making the senators a four-year term, right to personal reproductive liberty, equality of rights, right to privacy. Here's the one that's run into a stumbling block, eliminating reference to slavery in the Vermont Constitution. I saw that. Well, what's happened is that some constitutional law scholars, particular, particularly Professor Teachout, have gone in and said, no, 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 you're going too far we need to look at preserving the historical integrity of the document, mm -hmm. even though we are trying to look for racial justice now that wasn't some of the original language. Well, the Constitution, Vermont Constitution, has been amended four times already. So what's so we the have problem? A, exactly. Yeah. And if you have an interest in the archival, Secretary of State's office, I believe, keeps archival records. The amendment as introduced by Deb Ingram acknowledges that all Vermonters are equal, period. And that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, I have You're not going to have anything as fun as the penguins, are you? No, no, I have sad news, in fact. Uh, the transgender woman who sought asylum um, in El yeah. Salvador uh, in the U.S. and was rejected, has died in El Salvador. 
Uh, her name, I have a picture now before you, her name was Camila Diaz Cordova. She was 29, died days after she was found injured in a municipality on the outskirts of San Salvador. Um, both a friend and a trans advocate said that she had either been brutally attacked or struck by a vehicle and was transported to a hospital after she was found injured in the street. Mm. She'd requested an asylum from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection in the summer of 2017 in Tijuana. She said fleeing to the U.S. after gang members had tried to kill her, uh, her friend said. By November 2017, she'd been deported to El Salvador. Um, her death, of course, comes as a criticism of the Trump's administration, tr administration's treatment of transgender asylum seekers. We remember Roxana Hernandez, a trans woman who traveled with the spring migrant uh, caravan, died in U.S. custody shortly after requesting asylum. The journey to the U.S. is also dangerous for LGBT migrants. The U.N. High Commissioner on Refugees reported that 88 percent of LGBT asylum seekers and refugees from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador who were interviewed in a study suffered sexual and gender-based violence in their countries of origin. Another report found that two-thirds of LGBT refugees from Central America had suffered sexual and gender-based violence once they entered Mexico. So it's very violent. Uh, Mexico, uh, I reported last time that an LGBT activist had been murdered. Um, in more news from Mexico, prominent indigenous LGBT activist Oscar Cazarola, 68, was found dead over the weekend in his home in what appears to be a violent attack in Oaxaca. Uh, he, I have a picture before you of him. He received a blow to the heart with a sharp object. He was an advocate for muxa culture, a non-binary gender identity stemming from indigenous Zapotec culture. Um, okay, we, there is, Tunisia had been moving forward, some people said, but now the government is cracking down on the main LGBT rights organization there. Um, I have a picture before you now of applicants and patients at uh, Venezuelan, Venezuelan HIV AIDS office in Caracas. Uh, now the police in Venezuela have raided um, this office and HIV medication is being um, seized by the government, yeah. it's a terrible situation. So I have a, that picture there. Um, I'd like to show you, I'd like to talk about gay ads in Greece, but I may not have time. So I'd like to show you a picture of uh, trans students at the new public school for trans people that opened its store in Pakistan. So they are sitting at the table looking very studious. <laughs> so is that it for me? That's it for All you, right. I think. We're kind of... All right, we're <coughs> pressed for time, I okay. understand. Um, I have a, Billy, a picture of Billy and Hector, which uh, will be coming up on the screen. Billy Porter is Poe's star, and the Oscars went insane over his wonderful outfit. And he was paying homage with his outfit to the legendary Hector Extravaganza. And if we watch Pose, we I know what you're Pose. talking about. I know, of the House of Extravaganza. Hector posed <clears throat> away, uh, he, uh, Hector passed away two months ago and was a legend in the ball scene. He was also one of the producers of Pose and there are their pictures trans, uh, together um, on the screen. That caused a big stir at the Oscars. It was great, wasn't mm -hmm. it? It was really good. Yeah. The tuxedo gown was designed by Christian Seriano. Yes. Who is openly gay, a very openly gay designer. 
Yeah. Very informative. And, I didn't and, know that. Oh, yeah. Yes. I did read that, but since I don't know designers, I left I know. it out. But, you know, That's why we thank have Keith you. on this show. <laughs> Help us. And I just Keith. have one more quick story to tell you about, which is Sarah, Sarah ba Sharon Bottoms uh, died at 58. And we may remember in the 1990s, um, it was a, a really big case in which she um, uh, had her son taken away from her for um, by her mother, Kay uh, Bottoms. Um, and it went through a lot of court trials, but the, the really interesting thing was the judge made her go through about what was, what was, you know, entailed in lesbian sex. And when she talked about oral sex, uh, which was against the law at the time, uh, that sort of did it for her and uh, she lost her son anyway. Very sadly, she died at 48, so. Mm. So in lieu of a trivia question, I have a statement that I found in the premiere issue of Out in the Mountains from February of 1986. And looking at our impending Stonewall 50 recognition. For too long, lesbian, and I apologize at the beginning that the reference here is lesbians and gay men. It had not been expanded at that point in time. So this is the language as published in 1986. For too long, lesbians and gay men have been denied our voice. Our existence has been defined by others. The medical, psychiatric, religious, and legal authorities gained power over us through their ability to name us. The names they called us were neither pretty nor true, sick, disturbed, immoral, and dangerous. Their names kept us isolated from each other ashamed of our own selves and frightened of the world around us. Somehow, almost miraculously, that has changed. In the decade and a half since Stonewall, lesbians and gay men have taken power over our own lives by defining our own existence. We have changed our own and society's perception of who we are. As far as we have come, however, there is still far to go. Lesbians and gay men still face the challenge of living in a world that is essentially homophobic and sexist. The reality of life for most lesbians and gay men still involves a significant amount of fear. Fear of being discriminated against, fear of physical violence, fear of being found out. Yet against that background, there is a significant amount of joy. The joy of being part of a loving and caring lesbian and gay community the joy of discovering new ways of living and recognizing each other. Our community is full of creative, talented, dedicated, and wonderful people. Anything that ties us together is a step forward, a way of fighting the myths and lies about us, a way of building a stronger community, a way of giving strength to ourselves. Out in the Mountain looks forward to being part of that community building process in Vermont. We recognize the special challenges lesbian and gay men face in a rural state, as well as the special opportunities. <laughs> we make no special claim to speak for all lesbians and gay men. We hope what we hope to provide is a mechanism for your voices to be heard. The diversity of our experience is incredible. The voice of our community is not the voice of any small group, but rather a rich and varied sometimes discordant, cacophony of countless men and women. We hope you will join us and add your voice to that beautiful chorus. Words for us to look forward to for the next 50 years. We now have an interview with Representative Kathleen James, one of our newest recently elected 40 <coughs> legislators. How many are there? There were 40 new legislators. How many LGBTQ are there now? Do you know? Seven? Eight? Nine. Nine. Okay. And when we come back from the interview. Hello, and we're delighted today to be talking to one of our newest representatives, Representative Kathleen James from the Bennington Ford District. She lives in Manchester Center. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. And we really do want to get to know you because you're, <laughs> and you're nervous. Because I'm so fascinating. And you're yeah. nervous already. You're one of our newest 
without legislators. And we've yes. made a commitment to talk to those people from within our community who help bring about change, who help move our community forward. And you are decidedly that person now. And I'm going to eliminate some of the sort of background stuff that we usually talk about because I want to jump into something we were just talking about before we started taping, which is how you came to run for a statewide office at this point in time. You had, done, as I'm talking over you already, you had done some involvement on a community basis. And then you became involved with Emerge. Correct. Who then gave you this inspiration to run for a statewide office. She was the top vote getter in her district and she defeated an incumbent. No small task. <laughs> so tell me about Emerge and how you became involved and what they gave you. Okay. Um, well, I guess, you know, I guess like a lot of first time candidates around the country, I, I really was inspired to run um, by the 2016 election. Um, I, <laughs> I felt compelled. Rather than moving to Canada. <laughs> yeah. I felt really personally compelled to do something meaningful and, and not to do something small. Okay. And uh, so I started looking around um, for opportunities um, to maybe take a leadership class, uh, you know, because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I, I had always wanted to run for the legislature, but over the years of being a mom and raising my daughters, that, that dream had kind of faded it stepped back into and the background. And um, a woman in my community uh, told me about Emerge um, and suggested that I run because after the 2016 election, I became very involved in grassroots politics um, in my community. I, I uh, planned and led a bus trip to the Women's March, which was amazing. Wow. We filled uh, filled 110 seats on two buses in four days. We and uh, yeah, we were on fire. And uh, we went to the Women's March. I got involved in the local Democrats. I was involved with Move On Manchester, um, with Earth Matters, which is an environmental group. So um, A wide variety of interests there. Yeah, I was doing a lot of stuff. And, and grass grassroots organizing is where the real effort needs to be right now. I, I couldn't because, agree more. Because we know that on a federal level, Forget our it. voice isn't going to be heard. Yep. We need to support everything that's underneath that. Yeah. And so keep that movement forward. I became very um, energized by the thought of, of working locally and how could I make an impact you know, right. at the local in level. In the North Shire. In the North Shire. So um, I was referred to Emerge, um, a group of uh, local women who had been um, kind of watching me and helping me and who had been part of this big community grassroots effort, um, paid for my tuition um, to attend Emerge, and I did their six-month training program. You and really stepped into this. I did. Um, and Emerge, for, for those who don't know, it's a... Um, it's a national nonprofit right. with chapters in maybe 25 states by now, and they train women Democrats to run for office. And we so, thank them for it. Yeah, they do a fantastic job. Uh, the six-month curriculum was was remarkable. I, you know, it gave me um, all the tools I needed to plan and um, run an effective real campaign. You know, I, I felt here, like I was handed a toolkit. Um, and here you are. Yeah, and plus inspiration. You know, I was, I was uh, in a class with a couple dozen women from around the state, many of whom um, were running, and several of us had our eye on the state house. Um, so okay. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for, for Emerge, I don't think. Other women that were in your class that also got elected this time? Uh, Ruth Hardy in the Senate. Yes. Um, it was the Emerge Executive. She was a bit of executive. a surprise. She was the Emerge Executive Director. So, but Ruth counts, I think, as among our Emerge class. Um, Emily Kornheiser from yep. Brattleboro, uh, myself, Sarah Coffey. Yep. Um, we were all in the same, gosh, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. We were all in the same six-month cohort. I didn't ask you for a comprehensive roster. It was yes. just a few. Uh, those are examples. And then there were, there are other women who were doing the Emerge weekend-long boot camps. Um, Sarita Austin, Mary Beth Redman, Carrie Dolan, um, they're a bunch of us. I, I'm incredibly encouraged hearing this 
in looking at what you all are going to be doing going forward. Yeah, hopefully we'll get some good work done. And you already are. Yeah. You're, you're the clerk of the House Education Committee. I am the esteemed clerk of the Which Education Committee. Which means you have to committee. round up the cats to make them come in and testify when they're supposed to be there. Not really, actually. <laughs> 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 so as the, I, all I really do is uh, record our votes in the binder. Okay. So uh, yeah, our Shannon, our our full-time professional clerk takes the, on that task. Yeah, she the does chair all the has scheduling. Made the clerk do that in yeah. years past on some of the committees. Uh, you yeah. you have already looked at and voted out H three, was the which is the ethnic, social, and ethnic studies standards committee, which I'm going to talk a little bit about within yeah. the program itself. Um, and is coming back to you hopefully soon. I hope soon it to sounds... get finalized and signed into law. But you have in front of you a piece of legislation. I do. That you would really like to talk about, which is something that has been assigned to your committee. And I had it on my list of notes of asking you, did you know when you were going to be hearing testimony on this? I don't know so, when we're going to be hearing testimony. Um, but so explain this to H-185 to me. Yeah, it's, um, it's a bill that's come before our committee, and I was, I was really excited to see it. Um, I really hope we're, we're able to, you know, make some progress on it. But um, it's a bill that would um, allow transgender and gender nonconforming students in um, Vermont schools to access um, school programs, activities, and facilities that are consistent with their gender identity. So we're talking about sports teams. Um, All of those national debates about wrestling immediately comes to mind. Yeah, too. so um, I, I think it's a really interesting bill. Um, it also has a component, um, and I brought it along so that I didn't mess up my description of it, <laughs> but um, it also has um, a component that would um, require teachers and staff to address students by the name and pronoun that they prefer. Um, and in addition, it would um, beef up record keeping um, so that you're encouraging teachers, staff, and students to, um, on forms, identify their sexual orientation and their gender identity. So we start to get some better data. So there's a lot, you know, a lot going on on this bill, and um, I think it's a good bill. Last year at the Youth Leadership Summit that's sponsored by Outright every year, when the governor came in and spoke with youth, one of the things that youth pointed out was there was no clear, consistent policy statewide within school districts about how they were identified. Hmm. You know, whatever was the name that was on your birth record is the name by which the staff addressed you, regardless of what you said with your preferred name. Hmm. So this will go an incredible long way in achieving what the students were saying, this is what we need. Yep. I need to be recognized for the person I am. The other piece about this is, you know, looking at all of the national statistics about those things that help us excel, the ability to participate in these types of activities increases your sense of self-esteem. Yep. It also increases your academic achievements in addition to the athletics. The two in tandem is what really helps move you forward. Yeah. So, so. so you also we're one of the sponsors for the paid family leave bill. I am one of the sponsors for the paid as, family leave bill. As I read off the list of bills you sponsored, you can sort of look at, oh, I sponsored that? No, uh, I, know what, <laughs> I know what bills I've sponsored. So far. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not that long of a, lift, a list. I'm trying to be uh, judicious. But yeah, okay. um, yep, I am a, I'm a, one of the sponsors on the Paid Family uh, Leave Act. And I think it would be uh, you know, a real game changer um, for for the state of the Vermont, uh, for the state of Vermont, and I was really pleased to see that they expanded the language. Yes. Um, to have a include a more, uh, I guess, inclusive definition of, of family and relationships. That was uh, great work. I didn't yeah. initiate that, but I uh, was happy to hear that was happening. Yeah. So, they, they um, actually included some language. That I, when you looked at it, you're like you went even further. They went even further than the anticipation. If we were in a relationship where I was providing a parental role to you, 
And even without all of those legal recognitions, if I can show how I am contributing to your welfare, yep. your well-being, I could qualify for family leave. But they didn't just stop there. They went a little further and said, okay, as we age, if as an older person I need the care based upon that prior relationship, you now qualify for paid family leave to yep. come help take care of me, which was such a revolutionary process to include in that, yeah, into well, that bill. It, it was a we'll see what happens. I know it's in Ways and Means right now, and they're you know trying to figure out um, you the know, money part of it, which the is money always part of it, which is very important. Yeah, how to make it financially sustainable. But um, I have high hopes. You know, I just I think a bill like this will go such a long way to support um, support Vermont workers and Vermont families in um, you know the things that matter. And so. and and recognize the supportive relationships that we create, yep. not just the families into which we are born, but the families that evolve around us. Yeah, it's been very affirming to to be elected and, and get up to Montpelier and have H3 be the first uh, bill that my committee uh, takes a look at and um, to be having H-185 arrive and then to have a chance to put my name on the, you know, the paid family leave bill, um, it's exciting. The, the, I'm not gonna talk about H-57 for which you were also a core sponsor, which was, you know, the right We can talk about it if you want, but. It would take up more time than we have. <laughs> I, I, the committee, the public hearing was, but is there any other specific piece of legislation that really excites you, that you're really looking at, I really want the chance to debate that? Paid family leave is big for me was right now. One? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, it was one of the first bills I was hoping to have, you know, to see move through, and um, it's, right now I'm just, I'm keeping my eyes on the prize with that one. Okay. And the Education Committee is the committee that you really wanted to serve on? That's yeah. usually one of my first questions. Well, too, um, uh, you know, we, we were allowed to rank our committees in order, yeah. and um, I submitted two equally t ranked first choices, um, education and then natural, natural resources. Which is where, one of your other passions that yeah, you I have Yeah, I have less expertise, but a lot of passion around climate action. Um, it was something I talked about a lot during my campaign. Um, and it's an issue that means a lot to me. And so since I've been up here in Montpelier, I've been attending meetings of the Climate Solutions Caucus. And really, they're mostly learning. I mean, you know, these are, these are technical issues around technology and energy and, you know, weatherization and stuff. And, and that's what's impressing me about you is you're coming in not thinking that you know anything, but I want to learn, teach me. And those are the people you really want to have on the committee doing the real work, and we have a minute left. Okay. So what is it that we haven't <laughs> talked about, or what is it that people really need to know about Representative Kathleen James of Manchester Center, Vermont? Well, not. Proud representative <laughs> of the North Shire. Not much. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I really am a, a listener and a, and a learner. So, I, you know, I'm just here to try to do whatever good work is put in front of me and, um, you know, hope to stick around long enough to get some stuff accomplished. And you want your constituents to be in touch with you and let you know how the work you're doing in Montpelier is directly impacting their lives. So far, I've been hearing from a lot of people. It's great. All right. Thank you very much for your first visit. <laughs> And you'll get to come back. All right. Oh, I passed. You passed. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Well, before we, let me commend that interview. It was great. I, I really did. enjoyed it. It was wonderful. Yeah. I, I, I have real hope she for looks, she's a star. going forward. Yeah, yeah. definitely a She, star. Becca Ballant. Yeah. Deanna Gonzalez. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, all we, of them. Yeah. The, whole, the great. All nine of them. So, and as your advice to us always is remember to resist.